Hello everyone, I am Gulzameen Khan and I am a PhD student at School of Information and Communication Technology, Griffith University, Australia. The title of our presentation is A Reliable Multicast MAC Protocol for Wi-Fi Direct A02.11 Networks. I will discuss the following contents in my presentation. First of all, I will introduce Wi-Fi Direct technology very briefly. Wi-Fi Direct is a new technology by Wi-Fi Alliance that enables two or more nearby devices such as mobile phones, tablets, laptops, etc. to connect directly in the absence of access point or AP. This kind of point-to-point -point or device-to-device -device communication was already present in Wi-Fi but it did not contain device discovery, power saving, and most importantly, the presence of AP was must for this kind of point-to-point -point connectivity. On the other hand, Wi-Fi Direct overcomes all these shortcomings with point-to-point -point communication and provides easy, fast, and seamless connectivity between nearby devices without any AP. Wi-Fi Direct has numerous applications, for example, local content sharing, sharing network services, location-based services, and many more. In Wi-Fi Direct, all communications occur in a group. A group consists of one group owner and one or more clients. The group owner should be a Wi-Fi Direct enabled station, while the client can be any regular Wi-Fi station. Most of the new mobile phones, tablets, and laptops come with Wi-Fi Direct technology. There are three stages of communication Wi-Fi Direct. First, the devices discover each other, then they form a group that is decide which should be which device should be a group owner and which device should be a client after the group is formed. Multicast is the communication of one sender to a group of receivers in order to transmit the same contents to all receivers at the same time. A number of applications emerge from multicast in Wi-Fi Direct. We present two user cases as our motivation. The first user case on the left side is a situation where few friends go on a trip and one of them takes photos as a, on, on his or her mobile phone or camera. At the end of the trip, the photos are shared using multicast communication on Wi-Fi Direct. In the second scenario, there is a conference like EU CNC 2015 in which different people from various countries have participated. In their spare time, some people want to visit a place in the city, others want to try a food and restaurant. Everyone can find his or her relevant group of people using a simple application program that is based on local multicast communication in Wi-Fi Direct. Here I will discuss the background of multicast protocols in Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi Direct. In traditional or standard multicast protocol, the AP or group owner, in case of Wi-Fi Direct, send multicast data to all receivers without any RTS and CTS packets. Similarly, the receiver do not send any feedback information like acknowledgement back to AP. The reason behind this simple approach is to avoid collision between many acknowledgements from all receivers at the same time. This is because everyone shares the same channel. Standard multicast is simple but fully unreliable. In literature, one of the most famous protocols is leader-based multicast or ELBM. It works as follows. Group owner chooses randomly one client as leader that will send CTS and ACK. Group owner then sends the RTS to the leader client. The leader client sends CTS to group owner. If everything goes successful, group owner sends multicast data. It improves reliability to some extent as compared to standard multicast, but it cannot handle interference due to hidden nodes in the presence of unicast stations. By unicast station, we mean the stations that send unicast data to AP or receive data from AP, and they are not part of Wi-Fi direct group. Reliability is one of the main issues with multicast in Wi-Fi Direct. It can be defined as successful delivery of multicast data from group owner to all clients in the multicast group. The previously discussed protocols such as standard multicast and leader-based multicast protocols 
can be straight cannot be straightforwardly used for Wi-Fi direct networks. This is due to the following two main reasons. Multicast data in Wi-Fi direct is transmitted by group owner, which is not necessarily the AP. While the conventional multicast mechanisms assume that only AP transmits multicast data. The second reason is unlike AP, group owner is not the central controller, thus its communication can not only be collided with or interfered with by other unicast stations or AP in its range, but it is also more prone to hidden to the hidden node problem. We propose an enhanced leader-based based multicast protocol. The three main features of ELBM are optimal selection of CTSR, which is the CTS representative. Same as leader. It improve, uh, the second feature is improved channel access mechanism. And third is enhanced RTS CTS method. I will explain them later, but first let's let us describe the working of ELBM. I will explain the working of ELBM with the help of with the help of this animation. In this scenario, there is one AP blue, few unicast stations yellow. Uh, which communicate with AP. There is one group owner green and three clients brown. First of all, group owner chooses a client who is closest to the AP as CTSR that will send CTS back to group owner. The group owner sends RTS to CTSR using an enhanced RTS CTS scheme. CTSR sends CTS to group owner at this point, all those stations who have heard either RTS or CTS knows about the upcoming multicast transmission. Group owner then sends multicast data to its clients. I will describe the three features of ELBM in the following sections. The first feature is that a client closest to the AP is selected as CTSR. The reason behind this is twofold. First, it minimizes the interference of hidden nodes and second it maximizes the effective coverage of CTS frame transmission. It can be demonstrated with the help of this example. If we choose the following client as CTSR, there is only one station that can cause interference. But on the other hand, if we choose another client as CTSR, three stations may cause interference, which are shown as red. Thus, the selection of CTSR can increase or decrease the number of uh, stations that can cause interference. The distance of client from AP is calculated using time of arrival or any technique or techniques based on uh, RSI. Here we propose an improved channel access mechanism after sending RTS group owner waits for CTS or acknowledgement and then send multicast data after waiting for SIF's amount of time. It ensures the channel access to group owner first because AP will wait for PIFs and other station, unicast station will wait for DIFF's amount of time and both of them are uh, greater than SIF's. If RTS is successful, the following flow shown by green will be followed. But if your RT, uh, RTS uh, is not successful, the flow shown by red will be followed. In this way, ELBM accommodates RTS failure. Here I will discuss all possible cases of ELBM. This is the ideal case where RTS and CTS both are successful. There is one group owner, one client, one AP and one unicast station. Group owner sends RTS. CTSR certain CTS. Group owner waits for SIFs and then sends multicard data. Everyone else freezes their backup counter while group owner transmits. This is the case where RTS is lost. It means some unicast station was also transmitting at the same time. 
This group owner waits until that Unica station sends acknowledgement to AP. It then decodes the acknowledgement and waits for shifts. It, after that, it sends multicast data. In third case, CTS is unsuccessful. Due to interference, the group owner waits for acknowledgement and send multicast data after waiting for shifts amount of time. In this case, either RTS or CTS or both may collide or interfere with hidden node. However, group owner can still decode acknowledgement and it is sent with lower rate. We have developed a time-based simulator in MATLAB. The parameters that we have used for MAC and PHY are shown in the table. We have developed two test cases, standard test case and complex test, test case. In the standard test case, there is one AP, one group owner, two clients and two unicast stations. Group owner sends multicast data to clients, while unicast stations send data to AP. Unicast, stations, unicast station 2 in this scenario is hidden node to group owner. In the second test case, there is one AP, one group owner, two clients, but we increase the number of unicast stations from 2 to 12. The green unicast stations are hidden node to group owner, while the red in are in the transmission range of group owner. We have used two performance metrics to measure the reliability of our proposed protocol. First is packet delivery ratio, which is the number of packets delivered successfully to the number of total packets. The second is throughput, which is the number of bits transmitted successfully in a given time. Here we compare the performance of our algorithm, that is ELBM, with other two, that is standard multicast and leader-based multicast for standard test case. The multicast PDR of group owner on the left for ELBM, which is shown as green, is better than the standard multicast shown as blue and leader-based multicast shown as red by 10% and 5% respectively. It will reduce if we add more hidden nodes. On the other hand, as shown on the right side of the figure, we lose unicast PDR for ELBM as compared to SM, but it is still better than LBM. Similarly, the multicast throughput of group owner on the left side of the figure for ELBM green is better than standard multicast blue and LBM red by 72% and 45% respectively. However, the unicast throughput of unicast station for ELBM is decreased by 10% as compared to SM, but it is still 7% better than LBM. The overall gain is much better for LBM, for ELBM. We also, we also calculate multicast throughput of group owner as a function of other unicast stations. As shown in the figure, multicast throughput of group owner is decreased as the number of unicast stations is increased for all the three protocols, but the multicast throughput for ELBM is better than SM and LBM. This is due to the three features that we incorporated into our protocol. In order to see the effects of ELBM on unicast stations, we calculate the average unicast throughput as a function of increasing the number of unicast stations. As shown in the figure, average unicast throughput is less for ELBM in start, but then it is increased as compared to SM, while ELBM always outperforms LBM. As shown in the table, ELBM also improves the overhead PDR as compared to LBM due to the enhanced RTS-CTS mechanism. In conclusion, this paper has investigated the problem of reliable multicast for Wi-Fi direct networks. Our proposed algorithm ELBM reduces collision and interference from AP and other stations due to improved access method, optimal CTSR selection, and enhanced RTS-CTS mechanism. The simulation results show better PDR and improved throughput for ELBM as compared to the other protocols. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. If you have any questions, please send them to me on the following email address.